إلينا المتحدث الثاني من جامعة تكساس A and M قطر، حيث يسعى حاليا للحصول على درجة الدكتوراه في الهندسة الكيميائية. يدور بحثه حول كيفية إزالة الكربون الصناعي. يرجى الترحيب بالأستاذ قاسم إبراهيم. How do you want? Have you ever felt motivated by laziness before? Yes, I know it's a bit weird and kind of contradictory, especially coming from a PhD student. But I think that's because of the stigma surrounding the word. And hopefully today, I hope to challenge that stigma and show that laziness can actually be a good thing. And in order to do that, we must first have to define what it means to be lazy. Luckily for all of us, I'm from Sudan, and as such, I'm a professional lazy person. Or at least that's how the stereotype goes. So most people conceptualize laziness as being unproductive. And I think this is a false conceptualization. I think a better conceptualization is this one. The desire or tendency to minimize energy expenditure. <laughs> So let me take you through my journey on how I went from being lazy and to refining and leverage that laziness to academic and research success. So as you know, I'm from Sudan and that's where my journey started. But I spent a lot of my early childhood traveling as my father also pursued his graduate studies. I spent time in Denmark and the UK before finally settling back in Sudan. At this point, I was roughly eight or nine years old. I could speak some Danish, some Arabic, and a bit of English. And I had to enroll in Sudanese schools. Primary schools are quite tough in Sudan. We have a very heavy curricular load, but I also had a lot of extracurricular activities that I was interested in. So it was a challenge to balance these things. And my academic success suffered from it. So now I had two options. I could either spend four or five hours studying to catch up with my peers, or I could just resign myself to poor academic performance and move on with my life. But neither of these options were appealing to me because obviously I'm lazy, but at the same time, I'm also very competitive. So this dilemma forced me to come up with a third option. And that third option was cars. And no, I don't mean literal cars that you drive around in. Cars is simply an abbreviation of a set of skills that I gained to efficiently um, utilize my energy and my time. Those skills are specifically continuation, abstraction, repurposing, and strategic planning. As time passed, I graduated from my primary education and I started my journey into higher education. That journey took me through a bachelor's degree, two master's degree, and finally, at the <laughs> moment, I'm, I'm in the final stretch of my PhD. And thanks to CARS, I managed to breeze through all of these degrees while having a great time. So let's see how I actually put cars to use in my graduate research experience. So looking at this picture, it's a bit scary, correct? These are all natural disasters and they've become more and more frequent recently. And the really scary thing is, it's only gonna get worse over time unless we do something drastic to fix it. The industrial revolution helped us a lot of the species. It gave us better quality of life, longer lifespan, and so on. But it came at the cost, which is greenhouse gas emissions. And we know greenhouse gas emissions cause climate change. So there's been a lot of focus on figuring out a way to mitigate or curtail our emissions. One way to do this is actually to recycle the carbon dioxide back into the same industrial process to produce products. This is known as carbon capture and utilization, or CCU. And it's a hot topic of research in my field at the moment. Uh, because it has the potential to completely eliminate CO2 emissions for many industries. Uh, and of course, this is very appealing to me, so I decided I will get into that field. And here is where the first skill of cars comes into play, which is continuity. So the idea of continuity is you just build on what's already available. There's no need to invent, reinvent the wheel. Uh, this allows you to see where people are at in terms of the state of literature, but it also allows you to identify gaps in knowledge and figure out what you can do to improve things or fill in these gaps. So for me, I was trying to assess carbon capture and utilization 
processes and continue to let me to this very elaborate process. People come up with the technology, they do a lot of experiments and research to study it, and eventually they make an assessment on both whether it can fix carbon dioxide and whether it's economically feasible. And the gap I found was that I don't think the people who did this were particularly lazy. Because this is a very involved process and you can spend a lot of energy, time and money to get to that final stage only to figure out that the technology is not worth it or will not work. So the question is, is there a better way to do this? A more lazy way to do this? And the answer to that is yes. And specifically thanks to the second skill, which is abstraction. Abstraction is basically the process of stripping away unnecessary details so you can get into the heart of the thing that you want. Like for example in this image, we can see a cat sitting on a mat. There's lots of details in that image, like the corner, the pattern in the mat, and the color of the cat. But in the end, if all we care about is the agent sitting on location, that's all we need. The agent sitting on location. The agent can be a cat, the name can be a lease, the mat can be brown. Most of those details do not matter, it depends on your purpose. In a similar matter, I, looking at CCU uh, uh, processes, uh, I could strip away all of the unnecessary details to come with this kind of representation, which is just a basic uh, building blocks for any possible carbon capture and utilization or CCU process. And I can abstract this even further by using mass. Now this mathematical equation is an abstraction of that process that allows me to calculate how much carbon dioxide is being fixed by any possible CCU process. So by, from going to details to abstractions, I can capture a lot more um, generalized expressions. And now I had this very simple process to calculate the CO2 fix. If it was more than one, great. Less than one, it's not fixing carbon dioxide. Neat, right? So let me shift gear a bit to this book written by economists. I read it a couple of years ago and it's great. Um, he was trying to analyze people based on two factors. Specifically, their ability to benefit themselves and their ability to benefit other people. And by doing so, he managed to categorize people into four distinct categories. And you might ask me, Gassim, what does this have to do with your research on carbon dioxide? And the answer to that is, it actually has a lot to do with my research, thanks to the third skilling part, which is repurposing. The idea of repurposing is, if you master it, you can take skills and knowledge you gain from one domain or one context, and apply it to many other contexts. I was also trying to analyze CCU reactions based on two factors. Specifically, I was trying to analyze them based on their economic feasibility and their ability to fix carbon dioxide. So, I already developed a way to um, analyze the carbon fixation potential, the CO2 fix, which I presented. The next thing was to see if I could find a way to analyze the economic potential. Luckily, thanks to continuity again, I looked through the research, uh, uh, the research and literature and found a very efficient way to analyze economic potential, and that is the MISR. And by repurposing the concept I got from the economics book, I developed a very similar framework to categorize all CCU reactions into one of four distinct categories. And using my super mass skills, I developed um, these two relationships that kind of relate the economic and CO2 fixation to develop even four more categories. Here's another example of repurposing, but this time I'm taking something I gained from my technical experience and my professional experience and applied it to my everyday life. So, um, we know carbon dioxide is a very lazy molecule. It takes a lot of energy to activate it. We call that energy uh, activation energy, and you see that hump right there, you have to overcome the hump before you kind of can just roll down the hill. And we do this normally by adding a catalyst, because when you add a catalyst, you can lower that hump, you see? It makes it much easier to go from the beginning to the end. In a similar fashion, you can look at any task or any process in the same coordinates. It has a beginning and it has an end. And a lot of the time, there's a hump to get started. You have that kind of initial barrier to get started, and once you get started, you can go down. Most people who procrastinate uh, tend to be lazy, that's correct. Um, and they wait until the last moment to get that energy boost from panic and anxiety to kind of overcome the hump and get to the finish, end, to the finish line. But that's not an efficient way of doing things. It can also can affect your mental health and the quality of your work. A better way is to find your catalyst. 
what catalyzes you, what lowers your activation energy. And for me, it was group work by working and collaborating with my peers in experiments or by having um, study groups for exams. I managed to overcome that activation energy and it made my life much easier. And finally, we have the last skill in cards, which is strategic planning. Let's look at this maze, for example. If my goal is to reach that yellow star, what, what approaches can I take? I can take one approach, which is to start at the beginning of the maze and work my way around just randomly until I reach the yellow star. Obviously, this is not a very efficient approach. A much better approach is to start from the yellow star, which is my goal, and work my way back all the way to the beginning and have a path that I know will take me directly to the yellow star, which is my goal. Again, in a similar fashion, during my PhD, I had to run a bunch of experiments to analyze how many factors affected um, my reactions. And to do this, I developed a, what's known as DOE, or Design of Experiments. This predetermines the number of experiments you need to do to reach a statistically re relevant result. Instead of just randomly doing experiments and hoping you stumble upon a good answer. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, this does not have to be your PhD experience or your graduate study experience. We've all seen the memes about how grad studies are horrible and so on and so forth. And don't get me wrong, grad studies are tough. It's not a, it's not a piece of cake, it's not a walk in the park. But if you're lazy and you're competitive and motivated, and I assume everyone in this room is competitive and motivated, otherwise you wouldn't be here, then I, I, I think you need to refine your laziness into tactical laziness. I managed to do that thanks to cars. And I encourage everyone to embrace cars, to become more productive, more creative, more innovative, and also maintain their mental health. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk.